Hi guys, this is uh, Johan from WI coming to you from uh, a reserve here in South Africa. Have you ever wondered why you have to pay for your volunteering? You're coming out to Africa, you're joining a wildlife uh, volunteer project and you're asking the question, why do I have to pay for this when uh, I'm offering my time, I'm volunteering my services um, and I'm flying halfway around the world to come and actually spend time and work uh, work hard for a conservation, worthwhile conservation project um, in another country? Well, those are very good questions. And certainly, um, I try to answer some of that for you. Um, I'm the director of WI. We are a conservation and research organization here in South Africa. We have a number of wildlife volunteering projects and we host volunteers, students and interns on a daily basis at uh, these projects where they come out from all over the world to join us and to add their time and effort towards maintaining our game reserves, supporting conservation efforts on the ground and performing some of the ecological services that uh, we provide to the reserves here in South Africa. To answer the question as to why you have to pay for your volunteering, the first thing I want to just uh, mention is that there are very real subsistence costs to hosting volunteers, students and interns at a project. There's obviously accommodation costs, there are meal costs, there are transport costs, various logistics, there's supervisory costs for staff um, to look after and host volunteers and provide the pastoral care for volunteers while they're with us. So there are very real subsistence costs um, and these I think are fairly easy to understand. So some of the other costs that are not always that evident are the costs that actually go into um, providing a wilderness experience. So when you have a game reserve uh, or in, in a national park, uh, you come and you see this pristine area and you think, oh, amazing African bush. But there's a lot of costs to actually provide that on the ground. And when you have a fully functioning ecosystem, there is a lot of behind the scenes costs that are not always that evident. And these are some of the costs that I also want to just highlight to you guys. That would be, as an example, your roads, your other infrastructure that you need, your water, your electricity. These need to be piped or cabled in from long distances We in rural locations. So these costs are very real, but they're not always that evident, but it goes into providing that wilderness experience for you. Some of those, just uh, the ones that you may be familiar with, would be your road infrastructure, your fencing, your security patrols, your anti-poaching, your electricity, your water you know these are rural locations where we um, operate in areas that are far from city centers and all of these services have to be provided on site so certainly those are costs that are often unquantified those are costs that are not always evident um, but those are very real costs and they are defrayed and they are paid for by volunteer funding um, in the forms of monthly levies or conservation contributions or gate fees or security fees so certainly these are often costs that are not that tangible and that are not that evident to volunteers um, at first glance but be assured in order to have a game reserve that's fully functioning as an ecosystem there are a huge amount of costs that are running in the background and then some of the other very obvious costs is operating in rural locations um, we collect data we perform ecological services and we do our conservation work throughout the reserve or throughout the park wherever we operate and this generally spans across a wide geographical area so we would have sampling sites, you would have different camera traps, you would have animals in specific areas that you're doing uh, observations on, or you may do vegetation sampling or survey sampling in another area. But the reality is that these are often widespread in a big geographic location and would require volunteers and students to be driven to all these sites and to be driven around the reserve in order to actually perform these services. Now obviously there are roads that need to be maintained quite often some of the areas are fairly inaccessible so we need specialized equipment to actually perform the service that we render on the ground and this could be in the form of 4x4 vehicles 
vehicles that have to cover large distances and rough terrain um, we need safety officers um, personnel with the capabilities and the competencies to carry um, large caliber rifles to provide safety in dangerous game areas so quite often lots of costs around equipment lots of costs around uh, vehicles um, to actually just get out there and do the work that we need to do and for all of this the volunteer funding is obviously essential and then a uh, very important another cost which in my opinion is the most important and that is that volunteers when they arrive with us in Campbell when they arrive with us at the reserve are generally unskilled and don't have any experience in what they came to do or came to assist and, and, and help us with um, in terms of the conservation work on the reserve so there's a large amount of effort and a considerable amount of time that is spent on actually training and upskilling our volunteers to get to the point where they can operate safely in a dangerous game environment where they are able and where they're equipped with the necessary basic skills to actually do some of the identifications that we require to assist us with camera trapping to assist us with data collection so there is quite a large amount of time and effort that go into uh, supporting and training our volunteers before they can actually be deployed on the ground and obviously that comes not only at a, a staffing cost but also in terms of a time uh, time budget in terms of time that's spent and we would have volunteers maybe for two three four weeks even up to 12 weeks but there's a large amount maybe 30 to 40 percent of the time is actually spent in tuition actually spend on training where we really need to upskill them so that they are able to actually do the data collection and that we can ensure the integrity of that data which is collected uh, these are just some of the brief uh, questions that we get and I thought I'll just uh, give you guys a quick rundown on some of these costs to give you a better understanding of what it means um, and why we actually charge to have volunteers and to host volunteers with us here in South Africa. Thank you for listening. If you found this informative, uh, click the link below. I'd love to welcome and host you at any of our reserves.